Hi everybody and welcome back to the Mark Goldbridge channel. It's episode two of Goldbridge Does Stand Up. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to it because the video cut off last time. So the sword story never even got told. It is a sword story. Some people thought I was dangling something else in my sleep. It's definitely a sword. Although I understand what people... Anyway, let's get into the show. Lots to talk about, what I've been up to to this week. We'll tell you the sleep story and there's a lot of else to get into as well. But first of all, I've got to say... Whilst the video did very well as a concept last week, it also got some complaints and it also got some abuse, which is, you know, boo-hoo, welcome to the world, haters are going to hate. But I think some people actually thought, I mean, basically, if you, if you have a YouTube channel, the held for review comments is always an interesting playground. Um, basically, it's the worst playground in the world. It's full of bullies and horrible abuse. Vile, that's why they're held for review. Even YouTube don't put them on the comments. So things like, this is a load of shit. Ricky Gervais will sleep well tonight. Um, talking about my show last week because I think some people thought I'd, I, the, the, the concept was basically to just do a little bit of stand, standing up, doing the things I do. Some people quite like it, some people hate it. But I think some people thought they were going to get a free Michael McIntyre uh, comedy sketch, which takes him a long time to write with rewrites and everything like that. I'm just freestyling it, hammer time. But I did think it's very, it's very, very worthwhile for me. And happy Paddy's Day, if you live in Ireland, by the way. I had one of these last week, but I'll have another one. Very nice. But I did write down some of the better comments um, in the Held for Review section, just to, just to give, you a, give you a taste. Stand up, question mark. If that's stand up, then I need to take a baseball back to your knees and make you sit down for the rest of your life. Just casual violence there. Um, another one. Um, absolute shit, you sweaty teenage nonce. Um, don't know whether you can actually be a nonce as a teenager, but don't really want to find out. Also, I th if I'm a sweaty teenage nonce, which quite clearly I'm not, I use Lynx Africa and I've got, and I'm not a teenager, just call me a nonce. Like sweaty teenage nonce makes it shout, sound like you may have a problem there. Uh, Four-eyed unfunny cunt. Uh, this is their words, not mine. Wasn't even wearing my glasses, so... Clearly doesn't like me, but has watched my other content where I have worn glasses. Um, another one, won't get that 30 minutes back. Next time I'll shave my nuts with sandpaper. I love that. I absolutely love that one. Won't get that 30 minutes back. Next time I'll just shave my nuts with sandpaper. He watched it for 30 minutes. If you'd have watched five minutes and realised it was shit, you could have done, you could have shaved your nuts with sandpaper as well. And your ass and your face, you cretin. Um, next one, go shag a goat, you Nottingham nonce. <laughs> yeah, um, go shag a goat, you Nottingham nonce. I, 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 again, the nonce theme was quite, quite, quite in there a lot, but, but the funny thing is, and I think the, the thing I find funny most of all, I don't really find it funny, I find it highly offensive and it really keeps me awake at night, no it doesn't. But the thing I find funny about it is that th these people, they clearly watch it and, and, and on, you know, actually just reminds me of something else on from that because I did offend some people last week. I, I'll come to why I offended them in a minute. Some of the jokes I did, um, uh, which, which, which we'll get into in a minute. But actually this week on the United Stand, we do it every six months. We try, you know, we, we, we invite, it's a fan channel. It's not really, it's not really a fan channel. It, it is a fan channel. I'm joking. I'm not going to joke about United Stand. It, it is a fan channel. And um, so basically every six months we get people to get involved. And we basically this week we said send a clip in of um, your thoughts on United at the moment, and you know people sent clips in and they sat there with their setups going, oh, hello and welcome to the United. I'm not saying taking the piss out of them; they did their best, um, but uh, it was slim pickings to be honest. Joke. That's a joke. Somebody will now write in and say that's a real knobhead thing to do, Goldbridge, when people have taken their time out to send something. You're such an arrogant twat. Um, you're probably right, but it was a joke. Anyway, somebody, within, within 10 minutes of me finishing the video where we'd mentioned it, the, the, the they were literally the first person to send one in. It doesn't go well. It sends the clip in, right? We don't see their face. We just see them filming me on the United Stand. Just some random section. It's nothing relevant. I'm just going like, you know, Harry Maguire's shit and, uh, you know, sell, sell Rashford and you know, normal chap, Bruno's crap and all this. Right? He's, he's filming that whilst talking over the top and he's going, basically, no one wants to work on your channel. You're an embarrassing, selfish piece of shit and you're not even funny. You're embarrassing 
and you're a load of, you're a wanker basically. So, the, <laughs> but the brilliant thing is, they were filming. They clearly watched the morning show to send the clip in, but the clip that they were showing of me was from a different video. And they're telling me that I'm an embarrassing, selfish shit, this, that, and the other, blah, de, blah. Fine, I've got no problem with that. I've got no problem with that at all. But you clearly watch the content. If you don't like it, don't watch it. The last thing I'm going to do in the world is sit and watch EastEnders. I used to watch it years ago. I'm never going to watch it again. I'm not going to sit there watching it going, this is an embarrassing load of shit. Fucking waste of time. And he's done it. He's, he's filmed me on a different clip. He's known about what I've said on that show. And then he's sent me a clip about it as well. And I'm like, sort your life out, mate. Sort your life out. Just don't watch it. You're clearly watching it and you don't like it. I mean, for me, I, I like a good analogy. And, and, and I, I would say this. You'll notice a little bit of a cut there. I'll explain that in a minute. But literally, it is a little bit like this. I like an analogy. And if this person is watching me on a different clip, having watched me on a different clip to send in a video to give me abuse, it's a little bit like your partner is shagging somebody, you film it, which is bad enough anyway, you're not happy, right? You're not happy that your partner's shagging someone else. You film it, then you send a clip to the person who shagged your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whatever, and you critique it. You go, look, you're an embarrassment. You're selfish. I don't know why. You, look at look at look at you there kissing her boobs. She's not enjoying it. I don't know why you're sticking it there because she doesn't like it. Oh, actually, oh, she, actually, she is enjoying it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's it's just it's just and the world is the world is full of these sort of people. It is it is full of these sort of people who they don't like something, but they do like but they watch it. I mean, I I've, I've watched quite a lot of YouTube, Twitch, all sorts of stuff where they've got a live chat, and you do notice the same names coming up going nonce, fucking idiot, and, and, until they get banned. But, the, but the, some of them can be quite tame going, you're absolutely shit. You're absolutely shit at FIFA. I don't know why you bother playing it. And they're air every day. But, so they're watching, it, they're watching me. It's me. It's, I'm shit at FIFA, let, let's be honest. But they are there every day. And some of them are members of your channel. Some of them will even pay to do it week in, week out. You're fucking shit, you are. I don't know why you bother playing it. You, oh, this is, oh, the best one. Boring. This is really boring. I'm like, nobody is chaining you to a chair to watch this content. Go and watch something else. There's some sad people in there. But I did upset some people last week. Um, two, two sets of people. First of all, Star Wars people. There was a few of those going, basically last week I said that, um, you know, I can't remember what I was talking about. I know I mentioned Game of Thrones. People were on, apparently did a spoiler alert. If you haven't watched Game of Thrones by now, swivel on it. Oh, you've ruined the end of Game of Thrones. I was thinking about watching that. You've only had about 10 years to watch it. I'm sorry, you'll be dead before you watch it. And that's not, that's not a threat, but what I mean is, get on and watch it. The world is not here to not provide you with spoilers. I try, but I'm not there to do that. But I was talking about Darth Vader, and I was basically talking about redemption arcs, and how at the end of it, he kills the Emperor. Oh, spoiler alert! He kills the Emperor. He's not really dead. And um, you know, anyway, he kills the Emperor. He spent his whole life being a right evil shit. Right? And I basically said, Darth Vader gets off with it like that. They're all clapping him at the end of Return of the Jedi. And all he's done is killed an evil guy to get his redemption arc when he's killed a load of young Jedi and stuff. And it's been a right shit. Oh, I've got the Star Wars lot having a go at me. Oh, you, you're just hating on Star Wars. I bet you like Marvel. I don't like Marvel. I don't understand Marvel. I don't understand Marvel. I'd understand taking my car engine apart and putting it back together, which I don't understand more than Marvel. I can't grasp what's going on with Marvel. There's too many films. Again, I, if, even if I tried to start watching Marvel, I'd be dead before I got to the end because there's just so much to it. But I do love Star Wars. So I, I don't want that. I don't want hate from Star Wars people because I love Star Wars. I'm really into it. Um, but somebody did say, what, what do you hate about Star Wars? And I thought, well, I don't, I don't hate Star Wars. Although it did get me thinking if I had to say something to you about that I don't like about Star Wars, one thing really pisses me off in the film Star Wars, right? Spoiler alert. Well, it's not even a spoiler. It's near the start. Obi-Wan Kenobi stood with Luke and basically stormtroopers, which are basically Darth Vader's army. They've killed a couple of people that Luke likes. And uh, the uh, Luke goes, who could it be? Some sort of, is it Jawas? Who are these little shitty things in brown... Um, that's not why they're shitty. Brown little cloaks. Houdini! Anyway, he, so Obi-Wan goes, 
only Imperial Stormtroopers could be this precise. Which is really good at that start of the film, because you think, bloody hell, this lot don't mess about. One, one shot, you're dead. Well, little do we know that later on in the show, the show, the film, they go and make a right prat at themselves. I'm not joking. Imperial Stormtroopers could only be this precise. That's a great line. It could have been a really good line, an epic line. You'll note not many people mention that line from Star Wars. It's the force be with you and all that nonsense. But it's not nonsense. I like the film, by the way. But what a good line it is. Only Imperial Stormtroopers could be this precise. You know why that line isn't a legacy line? Because about 45 minutes later in the film, when Luke and Han Solo and Leia are running, running around the Death Star like a prat, and they would have got caught, but it's a film, so I'll let it go. There's about 100 stormtroopers shooting at them, right? You know what Obi-Wan Kenobi should be saying then? Not only Imperial stormtroopers could be this precise, more like... You're a bunch of Timo Werner Prats. You couldn't hit the ocean from the boat. You couldn't finish your dinner. Stevie Wonder did it then more than you would. You know, they, 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 they couldn't. They're absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible shooting. And, and that's probably the only thing I'd say negative about Star Wars, apart from the prequels. But it bothers me. I mean, it, it does bother me a little bit because the whole point of doing the stuff that I do is I'm meant to be a little bit sarcastic. Otherwise, it would be very boring. Some people are shouting, you're fucking boring anyway, you're, you're rubbish. But, so, <laughs> I mentioned bricklayers. Oh my God, I had the brick, I, I almost thought I was gonna get an email from the, from the British Bricklaying, Brit, British Bricklaying Association. I really did. Arrogant, up your own arse, upper class twat. Well, arrogant I'll live with, up your own arse, yeah. Not upper class. <laughs> I'm from a working class background. In fact, my granddad and that side of the family are all bricklayers. It was used as a joke. Not everything is real. It's context, no. It's words for a bit of a joke. But people take it so bloody personally. You hate Star Wars, you hate bricklayers, you hate sharks, you hate polar bears. I'm half expecting a visit from the RSPCA or whatever looks after great white sharks. I wouldn't fancy that job. Do you feel like you're being abused by Goldbridge on YouTube? Yes, we were watching it last night and I'm telling you, I'm very, very upset. If this sea wasn't so wet, you'd see my tears. But people do get overly offended about stuff. They're, they're, lo they're looking for something to get offended about all the time. Um, and I don't think I'm selfish. I really don't think I'm selfish. That, that, that was the thing that bothered me the most. Not the nonce. I mean, that's just, everyone gets called that, I hope. Um, not the arrogance, not the you're not funny, you know, each to their own. If you don't get my jokes and you don't get my comedy, that's your problem. You're probably just a little bit thick. Probably doing some bricklaying, aren't you? That's a joke. It's a joke. Um, but yeah, the selfishness, I, I mean, it got me thinking, am I selfish? I've always thought, well, I do the charity stuff and obviously I'm doing that just so that I get a bit of attention. That's a joke as well. That's, see, that's a joke. No, I do that because, uh, because friends have died of cancer. See, you're not, you're not having a pop at me now, are you? Um, and family, not just friends, and family, remember that. Um, but, so I don't think I'm a selfish person, but I think we're all a little bit selfish. And I was thinking about this today. Where do you draw in the line at whether you're selfish or not, or whether you're a good person or not? Because what I was thinking is that if I'm on the bus, and, there's, and I'm sat down and an old person gets on, it will take, I will do it, but it will take me a few seconds to give them my spot. But I will do it. So that's an act of gratitude. People will say, well, why do you hesitate? I don't know. Ultimately, ultimately I'm a good, polite person, but I will wait a minute. Not, not a minute, a few seconds. I said a few seconds. I'm not sat there like, they haven't got to ask me. Um, I suppose what I'm doing, my thing with old people is that I don't fall into the trap. I think people see an old person getting on with a, you know, a limp and a bad back and a stick and they think, oh, poor old person. At one person, well, they might be 80 now with a limp and a stick, but at one point they were 35. They might have been a right shit. You know, they might have kicked a cat. You know, they might have driven through a red light. They might have told another old person. They might not have got up for another old person. They might have been really, they might have been really selfish. So I, I do, I sort of, I don't assess them. I'm not that, I don't do a questionnaire before. Just before I give up your seat, I know your back's hurting, but um, have you ever kicked a cat? 
Um, have, you, have you ever driven through a red light? Did you used to stand up for old people? Uh -uh. Th two out of three, it's not enough. You've got to get them all right. So stand up, which is, which is hard for me because normally I tell people to sit down. Anyway, I don't do anything like that. I will give them the seat, but there is a little bit of a delay with me, which got me thinking, ultimately I'm a good person because I will give up the seat. But if that old person was crossing the road and there's a car coming, if you hesitate, you're too late. And people might say, well, he just stood and watched. But if I say, no, I'm well known for this. I've even done a video about it. I will do the right thing. It just takes me a few seconds to think it through. Well, it's too bloody late now. They've been run over. I know, but I would have done. So where do you draw the line at uh, what is selfish and what's being a nice person? I mean, I must just add as well, for friends and family, don't worry, I won't hesitate. Um, I will do it on a case by case basis. I mean, ultimately, if the car's going really fast um, and realistically, I'm younger than you and I've got more to live for, I probably will hesitate. But generally, if you're a very close friend and, and a relative and certainly live in my house, I will jump in straight away. Um, and I have no regard for myself. But um, yeah, I, I think that jokes aside, we are very, um, we've all, we're all prone to selfishness. It's like I said last week, it's impossible to be nice all the time. I truly believe that. I do truly believe that. I do truly believe that. Anyway, what have I been up to this week? What have I been up to this week since last week? Well, apart from crying about the held for review comments, I've, um, it's been about football this week. And I, don't, I, know, I know this channel is not about football, but it has been about football this week for me because, um, yeah, United, United are my team, Manchester United. I can hear people booing. Um, it's been a difficult week. Got knocked out of the Champions League, and it really did affect my mood. It doesn't affect my mood as much as it used to, but it did affect my mood. And um, it, it sort of it's, it's nicely timed actually because this week I don't know whether you've read it. There's been certain United players, and they've been doing it for a while now. They're all happy when they're getting loads of likes because they've won a game. But as soon as they get a bit of stick. It's all about, oh, I'm struggling with the stick and the abuse and everything, which I'm sure they are, but they need to appreciate that as fans don't get paid hundreds of thousands of pounds a week to, to live the dream. As fans, really, our feelings are in the hands of these multimillionaire players. If they perform badly and lose in a big game, not only do you get bantered by your rival, but you've also got to live with that disappointment for a few days or a lot longer than that. And, and it's no laughing matter. I don't think, I, I think footballers these days and owners of clubs and media, they do just see the football fan as, um, as, a, as a wallet, as a way to make money. I don't think they really think about what it's like for us. And of course, these footballers are very quick to come out and say, oh, I'm struggling with all the attention and you know, people shouting at me and this, that and the other, which I completely agree. But what about the football fan? Football's nothing without the fans. And what about the football fan who, you know, they don't get paid lots of money. They don't get loads of followers on Instagram. They just have to put up with the fact that the club that they love is shit. And, you know, some, one example of this is when I lived in Ireland. Um, came in on a Monday morning. I used to work in an office in Ireland. Shout out for Ireland. Guinness. Um, it's not, there's, there's more to Ireland than this. There's more to Ireland than this, uh, than Guinness. There's more to Ireland, there's more to Ireland than Guinness. Uh, but yeah, um, I was working in Ireland. That was just an excuse to have a drink. I was working in Ireland and came in on a Monday morning and we're all around the coffee trolley, which I've told you before. That's where it used to happen, half past 10 on a morning by the coffee trolley. And uh, the lads, the lads, we're stood there sipping on a, a not a pint, not a, a pint of tea would go through me like berries go through a pigeon. Uh, tea makes me piss. Uh, sorry, we, urinate. There's so, uh, somebody will say it's the theanine or something like that, but there's something in tea. The worst thing I can do, you know sometimes when you go away to your like, you, you know, relatives and uh, you get up in the morning, you have a bit of breakfast, they'll go, should we go for a little walk? No, but you do it to be polite. And then you, you really just want to get off and then it'll be like, let's all have a cup of tea before you go. And it's the worst thing I can do. Oh, I've got a two hour drive now down the M6 after a cup of tea literally within I, the first bump as you go around the corner i'm like i'm gonna need i'm gonna be pissing myself in two minutes tea goes right through me anyway 
We're having a cup of tea. It's a Monday morning in the office in Dublin a few years ago, long time ago now actually, because I haven't lived there for a while. And the lads were talking about the match at the weekend. United have probably won at that time because they were good. And this woman, which is, I don't know where that term's right, this woman, I can't remember what her name was. Lady, female, this female, oh, I don't, I'm not being offensive, I just don't know what the term is. This lady sounds okay. So this lady, I mean, she wasn't, anyway, this lady, you should have seen her at the Christmas party is all I'm saying. I don't think lady's the right word. Um, then again, I wouldn't call them gentlemen either. And that's not to say that it was a load of gentlemen and her. I'm just saying that men are as bad as a women at a Christmas party. Um, anyway, we digress. We stood there having a sip of tea, dunking a bourbon, chocolate biscuit, not whiskey. And um, she comes over and says, oh, you're talking about the football. I thought this is going to be interesting. Yeah. She says, oh, what a bad weekend. I was like, oh my God, this is brave. This was the early noughties, you know, women's football and that really didn't exist. So it's a, it's a brave person to come in and start talking to football about people who, you know, they don't know who you are. You might, know what, you might not know what you're talking about. So I was like, maybe she's gonna talk some sense here. It could be a really interesting conversation. Um, and it was, it was, because she said, my husband leads lost at the weekends and I went yeah yeah they did I can't remember what they, I don't remember the score it's Leeds she went well it ruined my weekend I was like why she said um he's always like this when Leeds lose and I went he must be like it every week then because the shit um I didn't say that it didn't seem right it wasn't her fault um so she goes yeah he's always a nightmare when Leeds lose I was like okay and uh, I think that weekend they'd, they'd lost particularly badly I think it was 4-0 or something like that and she goes, yeah, well, Saturday's a case in point. Ruined the weekend. We had a night out planned and um, I'm, I've been to get my hair done and um, got a dress to wear. We're going out for a meal. And um, I get home about five o'clock and he's there having a right old tantrum. He says, we're not going out. I'm not in the mood. I can't be bothered, not going out. Um, and uh, that was it. He was in a right hunt for the rest of the night. You know, he just, just wouldn't really talk. And, you know, I think this can happen with people in their football team. They can get quite moody. And uh, I was like, oh, that's brought the mood of the conversation down. We can't talk about how great United are now. So I said, so um, ah, were you doing anything nice? And she went, well, we were going out for an, a, a meal for a, at a nice restaurant. So I was quite looking forward to it. But, you know, this is what he's like with his football. I was like, oh, OK. Well, at least you can arrange it, rearrange it. And she says, well, yeah, I could have done. But what I didn't know is my mate rang me up the next morning and said, where were you last night? I said, what do you mean, where were you last night? I was going out for a meal. She says, no, it was, it was your surprise 40th. I was like, oh, what? Your surprise 40th birthday party? She went, well, yeah, well, the meal was for my birthday, but I didn't know I was having a surprise party. And that's the impact that football can have on people in relation to how it can impact their mood. That poor lady missed out on a surprise party because Leeds lost and her husband had the ump. I've never done anything that bad. I have been quite moody, but I've never done anything that bad. In fact, the, I, I might have mentioned this before, the one thing I did do was, um, it was a family wedding. It was a quite important member of the family and it, it, it fell on, it got booked. I didn't have any impact on it anyway. I was like, like, like they were gonna listen to me, but I got told the date of the wedding in advance, like you do. Funnily enough, they sent me an invitation. Uh, ah, breaking news, I, I knew the wedding was gonna happen in advance. Anyway, the, the wedding happens, and obviously if you know anything about Premier League fixtures, if, it's, if you get told about something three months in advance, you don't necessarily know the kickoff time. So I get this invitation for this important family member, and um, it's not my wedding, by the way, that's not the pun. That, if people are thinking he's gonna go, and ba -dum -dum -tsh, it was my wedding. No, it wasn't my wedding. And um, I look at the dates, it's the Manchester Derby. What time's the wedding? Uh, two o'clock. I'm like, that's all right. They never put the Manchester Derby on, on on a lunchtime on a Saturday. It's always on a Sunday. It's fine. The wedding can go ahead. So, lo and behold, TV fixtures come out. Manchester Derby's on at half past twelve, and the wedding's at two o'clock. Can you all lie down in your bed, please? Dog wants to get involved. Um, so yeah, it's uh, you've thrown me now. Not probably her typing the bloody things. Anyway, so Manchester Derby, it's on the day of the wedding. 
It was in the early days of the United Stands, so you could probably go back and figure out what it was. I think it must have been about 2015 or 16. And um, I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm a family and everyone's going, what do you mean what are you going to do? You're just going to miss the game. I'm like, no, this is really important. It's really important that I do the content for the match. And the channel was very small at this time, but obviously I was ahead of the game. I knew what was going to happen. I knew where this was going. And they were like, it ended up, I ended up getting phone calls and stuff like that. The groom rung me up and said, it's really important that you're at the wedding. And I was like, the, the important bit is the stag do and the after bit. What time's, what time's the photos? It'll be about half three, because we're going to do it at the reception. Good, what time's the cutting of the cake? It'll be about six o'clock. What time's the speeches? About half four. Great, the match kicks off at half 12. I'll be done by half two. I'll be at, outside the church for the photos, easy by about three o'clock. But we really want you in the church. I'm like, I said, well, I'm not bloody getting, it's not me getting married, you're not marrying me. What, what, what do you want me there? Well, it's just nice to know you're there. How many times when you're having your big day, saying I do, are you gonna turn around, look at me, and I'm gonna be there, and you're gonna well up and go, oh, he's there. We don't have that sort of thing. I mean, imagine me, imagine what I'm like, you know, this is what I'm like. Imagine what I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a huggy, huggy, cry and everything like that. I'm like, what difference does it make if I'm in the church or not? We just want you in there. And then I start getting more phone calls saying, oh, I can't believe you're not gonna do it. Oh, okay, I'm gonna bloody do it then. I'll miss out on my dream of watching the Manchester Derby. Well, they'll be playing again in a few months. You don't get it. You don't understand football. If you're a football person, somebody's wedding is irrelevant unless it's your own when, when it's a big game. So the best bit was, the wedding was at half two. I sort of met him halfway. I did watch the first half. I was all dressed and ready. First half till about quarter past one. The wedding was at half two. So basically, I, list, I listened to half-time analysis and then I got in the car and I drove there and got there and everything was, you know, I'm on my phone checking all the time. Anyway, the bride only gets, only goes, gets stuck in fucking traffic anyway. But that's the worst thing I've probably ever done in relation to that. But... I do often think there are certain games like European Cup finals, last day of the season, if you're going for the title, World Cup finals, where you're having a bloody laugh. You're having an absolute laugh. I don't care whether it's your funeral. I'm not bloody coming. In fact, in some ways, that'd be better because they can't moan. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think football, this is something that the modern media, the modern footballer, they all want to make it just about them. Oh it's, oh, it's hard for me. It's hard for the fan. It really is hard for the fan. Um, anyway, I just want to check something because... I just remembered that last week it cut off, didn't it? Let's just check. Back to the dream scenario. So last week I was talking about, I think it cut off at the point where I said, I can be sunbathing on a beach and I'm sunbathing. You know, I actually had it today. It's probably one of the first sunny days we've had um um around here for this year and it wasn't sunny but it, it wasn't hot but it was sunny i took the dog out and the sun was out and i just stood there and leant against the wall looking up into the sky just feeling that sun on my face it's a very relaxing thing um don't do it for too long you'll get skin cancer and please do use sun cream as somebody who's had things removed um seriously about that anyway was oh, serious and fun that's that's me um but let, let's jump on this trampoline, kids, and have a great time. But be careful, you might fall off and break your neck. They're my kids. I'm not luring people onto a trampoline to jump around with me. Come on, kids. Come and jump around on the trampoline with me. That would be all kinds of wrong. Um, they're my kids. It's my trampoline. Actually, we haven't got a trampoline because they might break the neck. Um, I'm very safety conscious, especially with, uh, with, with Seb on his scooter. He, uh, he's, uh, he's a wild one and uh, you'll often hear me shouting, slow down, be careful of that cat. But I digress again. So I'll be there sunbathing in my dream on the beach, looking at people in the sea, going there in a bunch of idiots. And then the next thing you literally blink and you're 30 meters out further than anybody else in the sea. And you go, I'm definitely dreaming then because either that or Michael J. Fox is out of a job because I'm transporting myself from one place to another. I mean, you realise you're in a dream, you realise you're in the sea, you know why you're in the sea, and you realise there's a big bloody shark coming towards you. This was my problem for years. 
And it wasn't just sharks, it was wolves, it was polar bears, the lot. And I'd be like, this is gonna hurt, because it does hurt in your sleep. I don't know whether anyone else realizes this. When I get out by a shark, it hurts. There's a good and bad side to this. I do feel it. I remember a mate of mine saying, oh, I never have that, it never hurts. And I'm like, interesting. So when you get an by a shark, you don't feel it. But I guarantee when you're shagging Kylie Minogue, which you tell us about every night, you feel that. So yeah, you, I, I do feel it. Um, and it's not something you want when you're asleep. You know, you've got an assignment to do at school tomorrow. Um, actually, I would have been about five, so I don't think I was doing assignments then. I was a clever kid, but I don't think I was doing assignments. More, more, more like drawing pictures. So you've got a busy day at school tomorrow. You're meant to be catching your, you know, eight hours sleep to refresh yourself. You get any, you're going through the trauma of being eaten by a shark. What did you do last night? Well, I got home, I watched play school, um, had a nice tea, burger and chips, had a lovely bath playing with my boats. Then I went to sleep and got eight, ferociously eaten by a shark. Um, and that, that, that used to happen to me quite a lot because I've got an active imagination. And the great thing about thinking about positive things, and I was only five, so the Kylie Minogue thing was off the, off the hook. Um, basically probably would have just been kissing Nicola from class two, um, who had a crush on. Um, as much as you could be kissing Nicola, you could, and that's a good thought, you could also be in a sea getting eaten um, and no one's gonna save you. You know, my dad's a bit like me, he stood on the side thinking it through whilst I get at. He probably would have come out at one point, but no. So anyway, that used to happen to me a lot. And as I said last week, I have this thing that I do. It's really good because my partner knows it. I say my partner, I, I, I'm straight. I'm, I'm a man who is straight, who's married to a woman. So I'm gonna say my wife. I say partner because I want people to feel inclusive. I'm really, I really want lots of people to like my content, but I am a straight man who is married to a woman. So I should not say partner, I should say wife, even though that will probably be banned in 10 years um, because it's too gender specific, I don't know. I was thinking about this actually, you know, I, one of the reasons I was scared of wolves is because we used to have these bloody ladybird books about, you know, big, I said last week, this big wolf's walking around with Red Riding Hood and he's like scary as, horrible scary thing and he'd be walking around my dreams as well. He used to tickle me sometimes as well. I think he was a bit of a noncy wolf. Like the shark, as much as I hated it and it was painful, he would eat me. The wolf never did. He'd like pin my arms down and start I don't know whether he had an armpit fetish. It would be worse than being eaten, actually. It was horrible. This horrible big wolf thing that could walk with its feet would pin me down and then be, you know, doing stuff to me. I've never liked, ever since that, I've never liked my boobs being touched. Don't call them boobs, do you? But anyway, so I've lost, yeah, so yeah, talking about saying the right thing, I was thinking about this. Like these books, like Little Red Riding Hood, Three Little Pigs, um, bears, three little bears, no, Goldilocks and three bears. These stories are well ingrained, aren't we? Jo Goldilocks goes into a house, fucking trespassing, deserves to get mauled really, but doesn't. Oh, this porridge is too cold. This porridge is too hot. This porridge is just right. So it's, it, you know, steals people, breaks in and steals people's porridge. It's a new way of burglaring. You know, most people break in and they'll go for your flat screen TV and your laptop. But uh, Goldilocks, she'll go, have a porridge, find a bed to sleep in, and probably block your toilet up with, all, with the porridge shits out. But I think these stories will change, won't they? Goldilocks and the three bears goes in. Oh, that porridge looks all nice, but I better not eat it because I'm lactose intolerant. Three little pigs. Wolf blows the house. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house out. Oh, I'm all right. I built a house of straw, thick pig, thick pig. Don't worry about the wolf blowing it down. It only needs a little gust and you, you sat there like a prat. Blows his house down. Pig shitting himself. That's not gonna put the wolf off. I'm gonna eat you pig, you're an idiot. You deserve to be eaten for living in a house of straw. Don't know why I'm laughing. Um, before I do, I have a nut allergy have you eaten any nuts in the last 24 hours? See, the, the, these stories need to be adapted. They do, they need to be adapted. Anyway, I haven't forgotten where I was. So I'm in a dream these days and probably since I was about 14, I mastered it like a Jedi mind trick. I've enabled myself to wake myself up. 
or get somebody to wake me up. If I'm on a train and you hear it, if you're on a train tomorrow and you hear, I'm not going on a train tomorrow, but if you're on a train tomorrow and don't anybody nick it, this is my noise. Like a mating call from a lion, my noise, it's not a roar. Ah, ah, ah. That's my noise. In fact, it's not even that, that sounds like a bird. I've got it wrong. It's that's my noise. In my sleep, it's something completely different. In my sleep, it's like but my wife's told me it sounds like that's the noise. If you hear that, run and help me and wake me up. That means I'm in trouble. Air raid sirens can mean all sorts of things. An ambulance going by means slow down and let people through. People shit themselves when they're doing that, don't they? Bloody hell. I mean, I have worked, worked in the emergency services, but even before that, you can hear them coming a mile off. You hear the siren, you look in your, you either look forward, if it's coming towards you, don't worry about it too much unless it comes onto your side, but just slow down. If you look in your wing mirror and you can see flashing lights, Pull onto that curb thing, don't hit a pedestrian, although actually the timing is probably quite good, um, especially if it's an ambulance. Pull onto the curb and leave room and stop and leave room for the police, fire or ambulance to go through. Simple as that. I don't know why people can't do it. You see it happening, you're in an inner city area, I'm not going to say what city, I'm not saying that you know, Birmingham people are worse at it than Leeds. Um, I've never seen it in Leeds, but I've seen it in Birmingham. And um, you see it in wing, in wing mirror, the ambulance is coming through. Slow down, move over, there's plenty of room for it to come. People are doing it on the other side. You'll see somebody start bloody turning into the road. They're like, you can almost see them in the car. Oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And the husband or wife are going, just turn to the left. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I've stalled it now. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. People really panic with it. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's very obvious, just turn to the left. Anyway, so that's my noise. And uh, it works. I've, I've found the ability to make a noise in your sleep that's a noise in real life. And I get woken up. Up oh, yours, sharks. Swivel on it. I'm there. I'm, I'm sunbathing. Sunbathing. Next minute, I'm in the sea. Sharks coming towards me. Sometimes I'll taunt it. I'll go, it's going to get me in about five seconds, I'll actually swim around and go, oh, I'm just enjoying the last bit of the sun. Two, three. Arr, arr, arr. It's never happened to me yet where I've not been woken up. If I didn't get woken up, the shark's just going to see, think, what is he, why is he making a noise? But no, it works. It works. It works for me. Um, I don't know whether other people can do this. I don't know whether it really is a superpower. I don't know whether I haven't figured it out too late or whatever, but um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's good. It's good. It's a good thing. Um, I don't always use it. Some of, some of the dreams are quite good, but uh, in, a, in a sticky predicament, it's quite good. So if you ever hear the call, wake me up and don't start using it yourself. Don't do that. But uh, yeah, anyway, the sword, which is also something from my sleep. Um, I've, I've noticed I've noticed this is something completely different. This is not being not being able to wake myself up. This is sometimes coming towards the end of it. You know, sometimes when you, you know, when <laughs> <laughs> this used to happen to me a lot. Um, so much so that I figured it out, you know. This was when I was younger, it was before I was married, so I'm not cheating on my wife here. So um, there'd be somebody that you fancy, right? And it happened, the first couple of times it was annoying. So you're having a dream, it's someone you fancy, you know, you're having a chat, you're on your way home, something's probably gonna happen. Before it happens, you wake up, and you wake up and you go, oh shit, you try to go back to sleep, you can't do it, it's gone. If that happens to me now, I'm just like, no, let's not get the taxi, let's just get on with it. Oh no, we can't, it's a dream, don't worry about it. We'll just, let's just get the job done. Um, but that would, be, that would be with my wife now, so I wouldn't need to do that, would I actually? Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> no, that, that was when I was younger, in the younger days. But I do sometimes get that where I'm dreaming, but I'm slowly waking up. And this happened, this is where the sword thing comes from. For some reason, I'm always doing this with a sword, um, which is which I find weird for, for the thing in a minute. But the, we, the even weirder thing is, I'm just checking the time, the even, the even weirder thing is that I'm sat up, this, this happened quite a few times, I'm sat up in my bed and before the sword comes out, I'm in a really big argument with somebody. 
And it's quite an aggressive argument. I don't know whether you get this, but it's quite an aggressive argument. And I don't necessarily know who it is because I'm half asleep, half awake, and I'm sort of coming out of it. So whoever I'm having an argument with, I'm not visually seeing because I'm seeing the end of my bed, but I'm still sort of half asleep. And all I'm aware of is what I'm saying to them. And it's along the lines of, you, uh, you, you, you effing C words. I tell you what, I am gonna take your head, ram it up your ass, so it comes back where it started. You effing C U N T. I am gonna fuck you up. I am gonna absolutely make you wish you'd never been born. And it's always in a Cockney accent. I don't know why. Maybe it's films. I don't know stereotype. I'm always doing it in a poor. Bob Oskins voice. Not, not, not poor, not, 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 I'm not like Bob Os Oskins on the street. I mean, like, you know, it's a bad interpretation. It's always that. And then it escalates to, right, I did warn you, I'm gonna fuck you up. And then I go like this, get a sword out. And the next thing I'm going like this. And, but it's not just, I mean, literally, I'd be slicing him up like a piece of ham. His minions start coming in now who I can't see, but I'm half awake, half asleep, having a fight with. And it's always a sword. He, I don't know what's going on. And I never know what the context of the thing is, but because I'm talking like a cockney, it can't really be medieval jo George and the Hastings, bloody Battle of Hastings time. I, I just don't get it, but it's always a sword. I've never had any sword training in my life. If I'm getting a sword out and they've got a gun, they could just shoot me like they're doing Indiana Jones, but it's always a sword. I'm always giving them a load of shit in a London accent. And it's happen it happens a lot. One, I want to know who I'm doing it to. And two, and th well, uh, I don't, uh, it doesn't even make any sense, really. It doesn't make any sense. But that was the sword story from last week. People are going, that was a waste of time. They I'm glad it got cut last week. It needs to get cut this week. <sighs> but uh, yeah, dreams are a funny thing. And uh, the reality is, I think every night, Somebody, somebody told me, a specialist, uh, about dreams, not dreams the bed place, that you have loads of dreams every night that you're not even aware about. I could have been attacked by a shark more than I think, but uh, yes. Anyway, I'm running out of energy here, and I'm probably going to have to cut a lot of this, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Episode two, it isn't, well, it is what it is. You're either going to like it or you're not, but uh, it's not scripted. It's not meant to be a laugh a minute. It's basically going for Goldbridge that I used to do sat down, fused with standing up in the kitchen. That's basically what it is. If you like it, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you don't like it, why are you still watching? Thanks for watching, take care, don't take it seriously. I've got nothing against Star Wars, got nothing against bricklayers, and anybody else is probably offended. Thanks for watching.